Well, hello everybody. A look around now at some of the things that are happening outside in the garden, as well as a small harvest that I just completed in the in the hoop house. Uh, we survived our first hot spell. Um, some people probably won't even think this is hot, but last Saturday it got up to 32 degrees here with 84 percent humidity, and that's not my kind of weather. Anyway, since then it's been much more seasonable. It's lovely sunny weather. We had some showers yesterday, but today is a much cooler, bright, sunny day. So take a little look around at things here. I think it was about two weeks ago that I planted two of the uh, grapevine cuttings that I rooted um, at the trellises on the cabin, and today I finished planting the other six. Uh, two on my house. This particular one is um, at an old trellis that used to have a honeysuckle vine and the honeysuckle died. So hopefully it will grow up and at least start to cover that trellis this summer. The other one is at an arbor that's over my front door which is probably the location of where um, the original vine came from. I used to have the wild grape vine growing on that arbor. It died. But evidently before it died, birds ate the grapes and dropped the seeds next to the pine tree. And uh, I don't know how many years they've been there, but two or three years ago I discovered it growing 25, 30 feet up into the pine tree. I won't show you all the locations, but I'll show you one of the um, trees that I've planted at the base of. And that's just at the base of a uh, white birch here in my edge of my driveway. And I've planted uh, several more out in the field here at the base of poplar trees and um, one pine tree, I guess. So, anyway, in time we'll know whether or not they do what I hope they will do, grow up and into the tree and provide grapes for the birds to eat. Just a quick look around at some of the things that are growing outside in the garden and then we'll go in the hoop house. I have a little bit of harvesting I want to do in there today, but this old bed has seen better days, at least the um, boards or whatever that make up the edges of this raised bed have seen better days. I think they've rotted at the ends and also the frost has sprung them apart and I didn't bother taking it all apart to try to put it back together again. But what's growing in here are both my winter squash and three of the uh, zucchini type summer squash. And it isn't actually called a zucchini on the label. If you look down below, I'll have the list again. But uh, I think it pretty much is a zucchini. It's just that it's not supposed to grow as large. And hopefully that's true. I don't want to find any more of those things the size of a baseball bat hidden in there. But they've been in there for a couple of days, uh, three days maybe, and they're doing quite well. So far, I haven't been attacked by slugs or anything. And now we'll move on and have a look at those beans and potatoes that survived the deluge this here. This is the bean teepee, bean tower, or whatever, that I planted uh, Blue Lake pole beans all around the outside edge of the four foot square raised bed. And we had rain for a week after I planted them, so I figured they had rotted. But most of them are starting to come up. I may yet do some reseeding. I'm going to wait a little longer because there are still some that are just starting to emerge from the soil right now. So at least I think they made it through the, the flood here. This bed is next to the one with the bean teepee. And that's my garlic in front, which is looking very good still. No brown tips or hardly any brown tips on the foliage. Uh, I think I mentioned in one of my earlier clips that I planted 28 cloves and only 25 had come up. Well, that's all that ever did come up. Three in one of the squares. I put four cloves to a square foot. And in one square, three of them failed for some reason. I never dug down there to see what happened to them, but they aren't up now. They're never going to be. And the potatoes survived. I was really concerned about them because the bed that they're growing in was really in a wet area with all that heavy rain. It was practically a stream running down past it at one point. But they're all up and uh, getting to the point where I will soon have to hoe some more soil in around them in a day or so. I'll let them grow a little bit more so that I don't completely bury the leaves when I add the additional and soil. The peas seem to be in full bloom. Uh, 18 inches tall at least I guess and sort of leaning over to one side. But uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks or so I should have 
a lot of peas to harvest. My third attempt at this particular clip, I inhaled an insect and pretty much choked to death. Anyway, that particular cucumber that you're seeing over there in bloom is the F1 hybrid Rocky. Uh, it grows those little cucumbers that are only supposed to be four to six inches long and quite slender. Um, and it uh, has only female blossoms. Right now there are three blooms on it, with all of them being female. It doesn't require cross-pollination, so I should have some cucumbers on it soon. Uh, it's also a chance for me to brag about the Epsom salts. I'll show you several other things that have happened in here since I started using Epsom salts. But that particular plant was looking kind of yellowish. Uh, it lost one of the second set of leaves one that you can see at the bottom of that picture there with a little bit of brown on it is the, the other side of the leaf that didn't get lost I guess is what I'm trying to say. Anyway the whole plant was looking yellow. I added Epsom salts and within days it turned a beautiful vibrant green and really started growing so I'm in favor of Epsom salts now. Next to it is the seed that I got from Ray from the Praxis channel. Uh, white wonder cucumber, the first time I've ever grown a, a white cucumber. Uh, no blossoms there yet, uh, but I think I see some little bud things coming down in there, and it will need to be pollinated, so hopefully it'll have some male blossoms. And again, as well. I gave all of the pepper plants and the tomato plants a treatment with uh, Epsom salts, and if you remember from my last video, I was very upset with the color that the uh, tomato plants were in particular very yellowish. I was worried about them. Uh, since they've had the Epsom salts treatment, they've turned a nice shade of green and have really started to grow. I uh, don't know if you can pick this out or not. This one right here has has a few blossoms. I'm not, I have to look down to see what the variety is here. <clears throat> Number nine on the list, if you want to look up to see what the variety is. Now I've got to do a couple of small harvests in here. Uh, I got to pull two of my daikon. They're nowhere near ready, really. Probably about half grown, but they are shading out my onions, starting to overtake the onion patch. So, two of those are going to be pulled and used, and I'm also going to uh, take some of the uh, mustard greens. The noise that you can hear in the background is the exhaust fan in here it helps take care of the humidity. And for this shot, I'm really quite close to it. Off to the left, you can see a bare patch there. That's where the uh, leeks were planted and they were doing all right and then all of a sudden they started to do what I was afraid they would do. They started uh, producing blossom spikes. When they do that they, they grow a thing up through the center that's as hard as wood so I harvested them immediately and had a very good potato leek soup for dinner last evening. Anyway the first two daikon here have got to come out because as you can see they're hanging out over the onions and I want my onions to succeed too. They say that's caused by too much uh, compost. So maybe I've got too much compost in it. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy them anyway. Well, as you can see, some of the mustard is also starting to shade things out. These pepper plants are about to be overtaken, so it's time to do some harvesting, I guess. I will continue going down the row and taking off some of the Belden leaves and when I finish I'll show you what I get. That's not a bad little harvest for, uh, I guess we'd have to call this late spring. We're a couple of weeks away from the official start of our summer here. But I'd like the daikon to be a bit larger but I'm looking forward to eating them anyway. I really like, only grew them for the first time last year but I really like the things. 
And I'm pleased to say that in my taste testing of the very extremely hot mustard, that once it's cooked, it loses a lot of its heat. And I've also mixed in some of the leaves there of the milder variety. So there's dinner this evening, or part of it anyway. Very quickly here, this is what I'm doing with the first daikon of the season. I went online and found a recipe for pickled daikon. Uh, because Rob Bob had mentioned that he was going to pickle some. I thought that sounds interesting. Uh, I doubled the recipe and sort of improvised also because I didn't have one of the ingredients. But uh, the recipe was for eight ounces of sliced uh, radish, and mine was very close to double that, so I have doubled the other ingredients as well. I'm adding some slices of, uh, let me get them separated here, of Vidalia sweet onion that I didn't grow. It's grown, I'm sure, in the southern United States, probably Georgia. I love the things and they seem to be a seasonal thing. I found them at Costco the other day, so I invested in some Idalia onions. Just sort of try to mix it in together there or get the onion down below some of the other things. And it called for a half a cup of rice wine vinegar. I only had a splash of rice wine vinegar left, so I'm using an Italian uh, white wine vinegar. And as I say, this is a double recipe, so I'm using a, a cup. It called for, th well, a teaspoon and a half of salt for the, and doubling that would be three teaspoons. That's too much salt for me, so I'm using two teaspoons of salt. And it calls for half a cup of sugar, so doubling it, I have a, a cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. Spoon here. And I'm going to stir this until the sugar has dissolved. And then you cover it and refrigerate for um, eight hours at least. And I'm sure the uh, daikon and the onion will both reduce in size and go down into the brine because the, the salt in the brine will leach the moisture out of the uh, the onion and the daikon, and I'll take it out and stir it a few times in between. But that's the simple little recipe for some pickled daikon.